Okay, this is 6.4 continued part two. We're going to be looking at um, a formula real quick and then we're going to graph the tangent function. There'll still be two examples left. Example five and six we'll do in class first thing on Tuesday, but this one's a pretty easy one, so we're just going to go ahead and get this one over with. So 6.4 still. This is called the formula for negatives. The reason this formula exists is based on the symmetries that the individual graphs have. Um, that theorem is actually down below, but that's why this is the way it is. So there's a rule that says if you have a negative x and you get a negative y overall, because that's what that's saying, the negative is on the end result, um, then you have what we call um, origin symmetry. If you have put in a negative and you get the original function back, you have y-axis symmetry. So this is the difference between being an odd function and an even function. So the only two even functions are cosine and secant. The rest are all odd. So what that essentially means is if you plug in a negative to cosine or secant, it's the same as the original angle or t value. But if you plug in a negative t value to the others, it makes the overall sign negative. So let's just go through these really quick. Um, sine of negative 45, notice sine was the one where it actually is negative overall. So this is negative sine of 45 degrees. If you remember, a 45 degree angle is the square root of 2 over 2, square root of 2 over 2. That's the original 45 degree ordered pair. Think about that right there in space. So this would be square root of 2 over 2 because of the y value. That's what sine relates to. So this is negative square root of 2 over 2. Um, cosine of negative 30, we learned that cosine is one of the ones that it actually is an even function. So it comes back as the positive degree. So then cosine of 30, so think about a 30 degree angle that had the ordered pairs. Let's think about our triangle. This is 1, this is 2, and across from 60 is the square root of 3. So this ordered pair right here is, remember, cosine sine. So cosine is uh, adjacent over hypotenuse. That's square root of 3 over 2. And sine is opposite over adjacent, which would be 1 over 2. So since we're doing cosine, it would be the square root of 3 over 2. Um, tangent is another one that you get the negative out, um, out front because it has not got the even. It's the odd function. So this is negative tan of pi over 3. You have to remember what pi over 3 is. Pi over 3, remember if you don't remember, you can always turn it into a degree. Remember that's going to divide and leave you with 60 degrees. So if we think about a 60 degree triangle, that means this is 30, that is the, so our reference angle is 60. 30 is always across from 1, the hypotenuse is 2, and then square root of 3 is across from 60. So if we pick a point up here and we try to make the sine, um, excuse me, the cosine-sine ratios as our ordered pair, cosine is adjacent over hypotenuse, so that's 1 half. Um, and then, well, we could just look at this this way. We already have this. Um, but sine would be opposite over adjacent. And tangents, if you've already got your triangle drawn, tangents actually pretty easy because tangents just, remember, opposite over adjacent. So it's the negative square root of 3 over 1 or just negative square root of 3. Um, the next ones are reciprocals. So remember, cosecant matches with sine. So whatever sine does, cosecant does the same. So it's going to be negative cosecant of 30 degrees. Well, we already did a 30 degree triangle. And remember, cosecant is 1 over sine of theta. So sine of this 30 degree triangle is 1 half. So this is 1 over 1 half which we would multiply by the reciprocal on top and bottom. So this is going to be 2, but the negative out front tells me that it is negative 2. Um, secant of a 60 degree, so we already drew a 60 degree triangle. Secant, remember, means uh, it's the same as cosine. So actually this time it's going to be no negative outside or inside because it's an even function. So here's, uh, remember, cosine of secant because we want to do the um, 
reciprocal of that. So secant is 1 over cosine, but in this case cosine is 1 half. So we get the same situation again, except this time it's not negative since uh, cosine and secant are both even functions. And then the last one, oops, sorry, went too far. The last one is cotangent of negative pi over 4. Cotangent is an odd function, and the negative formula says that that means there'll be a negative outside if there was one inside. So if we look at pi over 4, and we try to draw that triangle, remember that's 45 degrees, so that's 1, 1, and square root of 2. So remember tangent is um, the reciprocal of cotangent, so 1 over tangent equals cotangent. Tangent here is opposite over adjacent, so that's 1 over 1. So this is 1, but it's going to end up being a negative 1 because of the formula for negatives. And then that is going to be summarized in this part right here. Theorem on even and odd trig functions. Cosine and secant are even functions. That means they have y-axis symmetry. So if you think about it, it folds over the y-axis. Um, sine, tangent, cotangent, and cosecant are all odd. That means they have origin symmetry. So here's the x-axis. Origin symmetry means you would fold it over twice to get the match. So in other words, if you have xy, you also have negative x, negative y. So this is a throwback to something you learned in 136 if you took that course, hopefully. When a function is even, it has the y-axis symmetry. If a function is odd, it has origin symmetry. And that really will help us graph tangent in just a second. Okay, so now we're going to actually finish this video off and we're going to graph the tangent function. That's kind of our culminating part for the video today. So we're thinking of y equals tan of x. Or remember, x is like theta or t, and y is the value of sine x divided by cosine x, because remember, that is what tangent really is. It's opposite over adjacent. So um, we're probably going to have to draw a unit circle again, just to help us get some ordered pairs that we can plot for tangent. And I'm actually going to focus just on quadrant 1 for a second. So remember, this is the ordered pair, zero, uh, excuse me, 1, 0. The top would be 0, 1. Uh, we had a couple different angles in here. We had a 60 degree angle, a 45 degree angle, and a 30 degree angle. And the 30 degree angle, this was when we had um, square root of 3 over 2 and 1 half. This is from our unit circle. 45 degree angle with square root of 2 over square, and square root of 2, and then another square root of 2 over square root of 2, or excuse me, over 2, it's hard to say that. And then the last one was just the reverse of this, because remember 30 and 60 degrees, they just swap which one becomes sine and which one becomes cosine. It's from the same triangle. So if we were looking at this and we wanted to get a list of ordered, ordered pairs, okay, so remember to find this we have to put any tangent you do has to be sine over cosine. These are of theta. So if I think about my xy chart, the values I plug in over here for y, because remember this is actually my theta, these are going to be my values. These are going to be those reciprocals that we're going to make those fractions. So for the first one, if you let the angle be 0, but then your ratio would be opposite over adjacent, so that's 0 over 1, which is just 0. If you let your angle be the 30 degrees, or if that was, remember, pi over 6 for us, then that would be 1 half over square root of 3 over 2. Now we would need to flip that and multiply by the reciprocal. You end up getting 1 over the square root of 3. Now I'm not worried about rationalizing that yet, because we're just going to turn it into a decimal for graphing purposes. Then for the 45 degree pi over 4, you're actually putting square root of 2 over 2 over square root of 2 over 2. So that's just going to equal 1. Um, and then for the last one, the pi, or excuse me, the next to last one, pi over 3 is 60 degrees. You would put the square root of 3 over 2 over 1 over the 2. So it's opposite over adjacent, so y value over x value. This time you just get square root of 3 
And then pi over 2 is where we have trouble. 90 degrees would then require me to put 1 over 0. That is undefined. So that means we're going to have a domain issue in our tangent functions. So let's graph what this actually means for us. So I'm going to put this as, let's see, first of all, let's get an estimate for square root of 3. That was our largest value. So square root of 3 is about 1.7. So we need our chart to at least go up to 2. So if I let this be 1 and this be 2, that means this is negative 1 and negative 2. Here, we're going to actually list these out, the ones that we did. So zeros at the center, so this is pi over 6. This is pi over 4, pi over 3, and pi over 2. Okay, so if we plot these, this is 0, 0, 1 divided by the square root of 3. Let's figure out what that is. So 1 divided by a 3 that has been a square root is 0.58, so just a little bit above half halfway between 0 and 1. And then we have pi over 4 was 1. And then we have that pi, oh, that doesn't want to stay. Um, pi over 6 was the 1.7-ish, excuse me, pi over 3. So that's somewhere in here. And then pi over 2 was undefined, which means that is going to make it a horizontal line. Now, I've blown this graph up quite a bit, but it's kind of going up a hill towards this line, but because that's undefined, we can never cross it, okay? Now, the thing we just learned a minute ago was that tangent has what we call origin symmetry. That's why I said this would help us graph this, which means whatever happens on the right side of the origin, a mirror image is going to happen on the left side. So I just need to count out 1, 2, 3, 4, and put a negative pi over 2, which is also like, that's like going down to 270 degrees. That will still give us an issue, and this is going to behave much in the same way that the other one did. It's going to head towards negative pi over 2, but it can't cross it. Now, I have zoomed this in quite a bit. We would never graph this this wide. Normally we would just have um, pi over 4, pi over 2, 3 pi over 4, pi. You would just go up by pi over 4 just like we always did. So, the, and this pattern is going to repeat. So tan actually has, um, it's from pi over 2 to pi over 2, so negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Tan's period is pi. It only goes in repeats of 180 degrees. Um, its domain is all real numbers except things that are like pi over 2. So a better way of writing that is like negative pi over 2 to 2 pi over 2, union with pi over 2 to 3 pi over 2, and etc. So there's going to be a lot of places where you're going to, anytime you're at 90 degrees or 270 degrees, you have to throw that x value, that theta value out. So it's going to have restrictions. But the um, range is actually, it hits every number on the number line because it goes down forever this way, up forever this way. So it's negative infinity to infinity. Now, I graphed this by hand, which looks pretty rough, but there is a picture down here below. And you can see that they shortened their interval quite a bit. And they only went, um, they only let negative pi over 2 to pi over 2 be a short interval instead of as big as I made mine. So notice that at 0 pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, 4 pi, it's, it's repeating that being at 0, and on the right it goes up, and on the left it goes down. There's something else we're going to talk about just for a second. This is a notation we'll use in class on Tuesday. This says, as x approaches pi over 2 from the left, and this says, as x approaches negative pi over 2 from the right, because the positive and negative is telling you from which direction. So, for example, here's pi over 2. If I'm approaching from the left, notice that my line is going up to positive infinity. Okay. If I approach negative pi over 2 from the right, so that means I'm going this way, then notice my line is decreasing down to negative infinity. So that's what they mean 
by saying, depending on which direction you're approaching this asymptote, this dotted line, your tangent's either going up to positive or down to negative infinity, depending on which way you're going. Okay? And that'll be useful when we discuss um, the last couple pages on Tuesday. What we're going to do is we'll look at this picture of all the graphs together real quick, and then we're going to answer some pictures from the graphs. So um, that's what we're going to hit on Tuesday, and then we'll also hit polar coordinates. I'm just about to post the notes for all of that uh, for this week and these videos. So I will see you on Tuesday.